Uh, syncope, again, the term itself does not indicate an epileptic disorder, but transient loss of consciousness could signify a form of epilepsy. Again, there are certain differences between an epileptic attack and syncope. So, for example, um, epileptic attacks, as, as I said, syncope typically uh, defines an episode there is a sharp onset and very quick recovery. People who have epilepsy, which causes a form of epilepsy, can cause loss of consciousness, but these patients often do not remember very well what happened before they passed out. They also have a prolonged period of recovery. So some of these patients may, may take hours to get better. They will feel confused. They will feel disorientated. They feel very groggy after this episode. So the recovery is not as quick. In some people, uh, the traditional obviously teaching was that some of these patients might bite their tongue who are having an epileptic attack. Some of them might lose control of their bowel and bladder which doesn't typically happen with the syncopal episode or syncope. Uh, but we now know that it's a very poor distinguishing feature that some patients with epilepsy might not bite their tongue, they might not lose control of their bowels and bladder, but usually they don't remember the events surrounding their attack, which syncopal patients do. And if they have a prolonged period of recovery, that points more towards it being a seizure activity. Usually not, but uh, there, there is obviously a form of migraine uh, that uh, headache disorder that can cause people to lose consciousness mm -hmm. briefly. Uh, but flickering lights should not trigger a syncopal episode because of the very nature of syncopal episode indicates a, a form of a car a cardiac or heart related or blood pressure related problem. And it should not cause, um, it should not be triggered by bright lights. If you feel that you are you are, you are passing out every time you're getting flickering lights, first of all, patients can sometimes get transient lighting of vision if they are coming to some very bright light, and people often uh, get confused between that and actually losing consciousness. So losing consciousness is you absolutely lose awareness of your surroundings. Whereas people who get transient blinding of vision are very aware of what's going on, but they just suddenly lose vision and that happens in very elderly people that people get sudden blinding of vision however if you are losing awareness for a period of time that is slightly more um, serious and that probably indicates that you have lost consciousness so this lo losing of awareness goes with a more of a simple episode and transient blinding mm. of vision mm. so yes if you feel that you actually have lost consciousness you have lost awareness during this episode then yes by you have to see a doctor Okay? But if you feel that you have transient lot, like blinding when you especially have gone from a dark area to a really bright area, some of us will experience transient blinding of vision, that is not loss of consciousness. Mm. But if you do have loss of consciousness and you're quite certain that you have lost consciousness, you should seek medical So they did a study on a group of German medical students who had, they, were, they had induced syncope. Okay? And they saw that these people actually had convulsions at the onset of syncope and the reason like typical syncopal episodes or syncope transiently reduces blood flow to your brain and this is why the the, the air, our seat of consciousness lies in the back of the brain so if you have global loss of blood supply to the brain suddenly people can lose consciousness and this kind of global loss of blood supply can also cause transient convulsions, okay? Um, and this is why sometimes it can be quite difficult to distinguish seizures from, uh, or epilepsy from um, syncope. And yes, like I said, convulsions can happen in syncope. So sometimes doctors will use other uh, characteristics to distinguish between people who are having syncope and seizure. And one of these characteristics, as I've mentioned, is a prolonged period of recovery. So people can often take, with seizures, can often take a long while to recover. So we should not use convulsions to distinguish between seizures and syncope. Right, okay, so uh, if you are suspecting, obviously, like, like I say, so the commonest reasons people uh, faint or lose consciousness are usually either blood pressure related or heart rate related problems. If you feel that there is a seizure related uh, um, uh, cause of your of people losing consciousness it can it, the history is very important so 
you have to take the history from the patient and how much they remember, how long they took to recover from the episode, what were the associated symptoms. But you also really, what is more valuable is an eyewitness account. So if they have someone who observes what happens during this episode, that is also very valuable. In terms of finding out if it's a seizure, so some a proportion of patients who have seizures with loss of consciousness might have a problem in the brain itself. So we would, we would uh, then recommend the patient has uh, some imaging of their brain, so either a CT scan or an MRI scan of the brain. We often also do other studies uh, like a, what we call an EEG or an electroencephalogram, which is like a tracing of the brain. And this tracing of the brain can be done in various circumstances. So they can do it during sleep, during an attack. So there are various ways we can tr do a tracing of the brain to find out how the brain activity is uh, to indicate if the patient actually has an abnormal brain activity during a seizure. It's also important to remember a normal EEG does not exclude seizures. So you can have seizure even if your EEG is normal. Okay. But a well-developed epilepsy service will have various ways of doing an EEG to really improve the diagnostic accuracy. <laughs>